Just a moment. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the UFS webinar. The webinar is hosted by the NWS OSTI. The goal of this webinar series is to enhance communication and share advancements in all aspects of the UFS in both research and operational settings. My name is Stacy, and I will be working with Yan Zhu, who is, <clears throat> excuse me, a program manager at OSTI to coordinate and deliver the webinar. Feel free to contact us if you have any comments and suggestions. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly show you how to sign up for the webinar, notifications, and how to view archived information. Here are a couple of housekeeping items that I would like to bring to your attention. So due to the high number of attendees, you'll be in listen-only mode during the event. You will not be able to unmute. If you have any questions now or during the event, please submit them via the question or chat tab on your GoToWebinar tool on the right of your screen. Presentation lasts for about 45 minutes, followed by questions and answers for 15 minutes. Please type your questions in the question box during the presentation. Okay. So now if anyone, if Yan would like to add a few words, that would be great. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks, Stacy. Uh, usually, um, uh, we are going to go through the UFS portal to show you how to uh, um, access those, uh, uh, the recording and the PPT slides from the previous webinar. Um, we, are, we can post the UFS portal in this chat box later. Uh, so we have started this uh, webinar series since last May. Uh, it's a bi-weekly webinar uh, uh, on Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, we try to cover uh, all areas, all aspects of UFS. Um, so we try to engage the community to work with the uh, UFS R2O project to build the next generation uh, of NCEP operational system. So. Um, so everybody, uh, I encourage to go look at the recording and the PPTs from uh, previous webinars. Uh, you have uh, uh, any recommendations uh, on speakers, please fill out the recommendation forms. Uh, also, I have uh, uh, experts to help me select the speakers from different topic areas. Today's webinar uh, is the data simulation uh, uh, selected by uh, Dale Clist. Uh, Ravo is going to introduce the speaker. Uh, thanks for the participation. Uh, feel free to give us uh, recommendations uh, and, and the comments. Have a great webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Yan. Okay, so Raul, feel free to share your screen whenever you are ready. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to today's episode of the UFS webinar series. Uh, today, we have with us Dr. Guillaume Bernier from the Joint Center for of Satellite Data Simulation, the JCSDA. Um, Guillaume leads the Sea Ice Ocean Coupled Assimilation, or the SOCA so project. Sorry, Raul, excuse me. Uh, we don't see our screen. Can you share your screen? I am not a presenter. I'm still a panelist. Oh, I thought you were going to show the uh, slides. Yeah, okay, now I can see. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, can everybody see my slides? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, back to uh, Guillaume, uh, leads the sea ice ocean coupled assimilation or the SOCA project at the JCSDA that uses the light side of the force of the Jedi to uh, improve the initialization of ocean and sea ice components um, in the modeling systems, specifically in the UFS for us at NOAA. Uh, this is the first presentation, and I hope more will follow, demonstrating the use of the JEDI system. Uh, prior to joining the JCSDA, Guillaume led the development of the ocean data simulation at uh, NASA GMAO uh, for a number of years, 
He holds degrees in mechanical engineering and a PhD in physical oceanography from um, the University of Oregon. He is also a Jedi master. Um, so without further ado, I will let Guillaume kick off. Guillaume, it's yours. Thanks. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Raul. Uh, so I will be talking about the Jedi-based ocean CIS DS uh, system for the USS today. Uh, I'm evidently not working alone on that project, and it actually involves quite a few people. Uh, from uh, within my group, I work uh, very closely with uh, Travis Luca, Hamide Brahimi, and uh, Kriti Bargava, who just joined us from uh, uh, from uh, UMDF. On the EMC side, I work a lot with uh, 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 Jong Kim from uh, the Marine DA group and the entire Marine DA group at EMC. Uh, we work also uh, a lot with uh, the GMAO, uh, with uh, Min Jung Kim, who uh, worked a lot on the uh, couples and the uh, CI beta simulation. And, uh, and none of this would be possible without uh, the development and the great work of the, the GDI team. Uh, and obviously, uh, Noah and uh, NASA. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the Jung Center, that's a, a quick plug for uh, uh, for uh, the center I work for. So it's an inter agency partnership hosted by UCAR, and we're dedicated to improving and accelerating the use uh, of uh, satellite data for weather, ocean, climate, and environmental analysis uh, prediction system. Our partners are NOAA, NASA, uh, the US Air Force, and uh, the Navy. Next. So the JCSDA has uh, three uh, large different projects. Uh, one is about observations, another one about uh, algorithms and infrastructure. Uh, that's uh, where the GDI uh, uh, development is done. And uh, another one which consists of all the applications. And uh, one of these applications is uh, marine uh, data simulation. Uh, and a good name for that project is uh, SOCA, which stands for Sea Ice Ocean Couple Simulation. Uh, next. All right, so SOCA, what is it? So we, uh, uh, we work on the marine data simulation, mainly for the ocean uh, sea ice. We do a little bit of a couple of uh, data simulation as well. Uh, all of our development is built uh, within the JDI system. Uh, and so, as I said, we do work on a couple of years, uh, some, uh, and that's uh, with the USS and the NASA at the US. Next. So the JDI, the goals of the JDI are to be the next generation unified DA system uh, to increase uh, transitions for uh, R2O to R2R, uh, and uh, increase the uh, science productivity and code performance. And that's achieved by having a modular, modular and flexible code, uh, which mutualize the model agnostic components across uh, applications, models, and uh, grids, uh, observations, uh, and all that in the hope of a, of a collective reduction of the entropy, uh, code entropy. Next. All right, so interface to JDI. Uh, the work that we have to do is uh, interface uh, model to the JDI system. Uh, and so far, we have a, a MOM6 interface to JDI, and that uh, work is developed uh, by uh, mainly Travis and myself. Uh, there is an effort to develop an interface for size six. Uh, this is done at the uh, EMC by uh, John Kim. Uh, we also just started uh, interfacing RAMS. RAM is a, a regional model. Uh, and uh, Hernan Arango is, uh, is uh, working on that development from the Red Gear. And we also have to develop uh, observing operators uh, related to uh, the ocean and sea ice. Uh, as well as a background error covariant, and in that case, we use a generic uh, pack package that's called the Saber. And I'll go into some of these details uh, later on throughout the talk. So once you have all these interfaces, what you get from the AI uh, is a generic application for uh, the algorithm. So there's dozens of uh, variational or ensemble-based uh, data simulation methods that are available from a uh, OOPS. Uh, some of them are uh, written down here, 3D VAR, 3D FGAT, or VBAR if you have access to a CLM and adjoint, hybrid VAR, LETTF, and so on. And you can also, for example, uh, simulate observations 
Uh, you can uh, randomize uh, a B matrix to create an uh, initial perturbation for an ensemble of forecast, or you can also uh, simply uh, advance uh, your model with uh, with uh, next. Okay, so uh, Jedi, what does it consist of? So on the left, you're seeing uh, the major repositories that are, we are using from uh, the TCSDS. Yeah? Uh, that the uh, dotted box on the left consists of that QI system. So in terms of observations repository, we have uh, uh, UFO, which stands for uh, Unified Forward Operator, uh, Yoda for the other database, and uh, we also have uh, Rigid Transfer Model, the CRPM. Uh, in terms of uh, algorithm and infrastructure, uh, we can run uh, uh, in uh, containers, uh, OOPS is uh, the uh, generic, uh, where all the generic DA uh, happens, and we also have a generic uh, matrix uh, repository called Saber. On the right of that slide, you're seeing all the external repositories that we might want to be using to interface models. So in that case, for example, for the Marine DA, uh, we have uh, MOM6 and FMS from uh, NOAA TLTL. Uh, we also use uh, the deep sea water. Uh, and so to to interface uh, these, uh, the, that GLI system to the model, we have to develop uh, with a model interface. And in that case, it would be uh, an interface for Monsic. So we cannot sit uh, in, in between uh, the GLI system and the, the, uh, the modeling uh, framework. Next. Okay, uh, so UFO stands for uh, Unified Forward Operators, and this is where you would put uh, your operators, for example, for uh, sea surface temperature, sea surface salinity, uh, in situ uh, temperature and salinity, altimetry, uh, ice fraction, thickness, freeboard, uh, and in the case of uh, direct radiance assimilation, this is where you would uh, be calling the CRTM. Next. Okay, so the uh, UFO uh, also includes uh, a lot of generic quality control uh, filters uh, that can be uh, used across uh, different observing systems. And, and I will go through some of these details in, uh, in uh, the next few slides, in the slides later on. And there is absolutely no coding required. Everything is just configuring a file to call uh, these filters. Next. So from OOPS, uh, you get, as I said earlier, OOPS stands for uh, Object Oriented Prediction System. From OOPS, you get uh, a bunch of uh, uh, the algorithm, and the one that uh, I will be talking about today are uh, 3D VAR and uh, 3D Hybrid EN VAR. And this is what we have uh, implemented for uh, for the UFS or NDBODA. Next. Saber is a, uh, is a, uh, where uh, it's, well, it stands for system agnostic background error representation, and this is uh, where we uh, a, a generic package to uh, for a bimetric or covariance modeling, uh, and this is used for uh, our three bar and the bar. Uh, yeah, perfect. So okay, so I'll go through. Yeah, yeah no, you can go next, Raoul. So uh, next few slides, I'm going to go through the type of activity that we've been uh, working on, and we try to go quickly through these slides. But uh, can you go to the next one, Raoul? So that's uh, examples of uh, how our system has been used. So Jason Zhu from uh, CPC uh, has used uh, our uh, 3D VAR uh, to work on the uh, OSSCs. Uh, he was looking at the different configuration of the uh, uh, of the uh, tower array uh, for a people. Next. Oops. Uh, in terms of uh, ocean color, uh, Jaryu from uh, NOAA EMC uh, is uh, working on uh, bringing in uh, uh, ocean color observations inside of our system to be able to uh, do a biogeochemistry assimilation. She is a regular contributor to uh, our uh, code base. Uh, and this is just showing example of the type of work she is doing. So she can currently assimilate uh, chlorophyll, and the cycle with a uh, observation. Uh, we, that, yeah, that was good, uh, Raul. Next. 
Okay, so we have our system is, uh, has uh, been implemented for the UFS, uh, for uh, GEOS, so that's the uh, DMAO system, uh, as well as MOM662. So they're all based on the MOM6 for the ocean model, uh, but they have different implementation for SCI, so from uh, size 4 to size 6 and size 2 for GFDL. Uh, we try to do regular intercomparison between uh, between us. Uh, it doesn't happen as often as we would like, but we do try to keep track of uh, each other's work and uh, where we are. Next. There is also an effort at uh, the GMAO to work on the CI freeboard assimilation. So this is uh, using uh, Cryostat 2 freeboard observation. These are level 2 products. Uh, and to uh, ingest that into the CI uh, model to constrain the CI uh, thickness. Uh, that work is in progress. It's probably not going to be used uh, for the next, uh, the, 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 the soon to come uh, implementation for the product, but this is work that is going to be available for, uh, for EMC and CPC. So, work being done uh, at the GMAO that will uh, be used at the uh, EMC and CPC. Next. Uh, so Hamide Ebrahimi is working on the direct uh, radiant assimilation, and this is done uh, in GIOS. Uh, so currently she can uh, simulate, uh, so using the background coming from the atmosphere and the ocean that goes, that's fed inside of the CRPM UFO, uh, she can uh, simulate the uh, GMI and SMAP. Uh, and that's our um, uh, an entry level top world data simulation uh, that we are currently working on. Next. We had also uh, a visiting scientist uh, last year who worked on uh, developing an AI-based salinity retrieval from SNAP, uh, and that work is currently being uh, tested through uh, observing system experiment, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, uh, a good idea on how to use that uh, product. So it, it, the quick result is that it seems to be improving uh, by quite a bit the retrieval in the uh, high latitude. Next. And uh, we just started working on the regional uh, marine here. Yeah. So Kriti Bargava just joined us uh, last week. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, looking at uh, initializing the uh, hurricane analysis and forecast system. Uh, so that's the initialization of uh, month six, regional month six. Uh, we also work with Hernan Arango, as I said earlier. Perfect. No, that was good, Raul. Next. OK, so the next few slides are uh, going to be about uh, uh, the GLI-based initialization of the marine component of the UFS. So I call it GLI Godass. Uh, it's called the uh, NG Godass, I guess, at the, the, at the EMC and the CPC. Uh, the system uh, that we are working on with, sorry, is, a one, is the one degree unified forecast system. So that's a MOM6 by 6 and the data atmosphere uh, where uh, the forcing is coming from the EFS. Uh, and that's all provided by EMC, and I, well, we mainly use it as a black box. Uh, the data simulation is all GLI based. Uh, this is a 3D VAR uh, provided by us uh, with contribution from EMC and the GMAO. Uh, and that has to be ready by uh, the end of March 2021. Uh, I think we're on a, a good path towards achieving that goal, so that's okay. Uh, and I, if you look at the, the, the description of that system, it, there's nothing very exciting. It's a low resolution, one degree model, 3D VAR, uh, not exciting, but uh, this was uh, uh, constrained by uh, the ever available uh, compute resources that we have access to for uh, 40 year reanalysis. Next. Uh, that's the outline of the rest of the slide. So I'll describe briefly uh, our reference experiment that uh, we keep uh, going back to. Uh, the observation subset that was used for uh, for the experiment. Uh, I'll describe also the uh, the algorithm. So we, we do use a 3D VAR, but we also run a hybrid EN VAR uh, as a sanity check. Uh, I'll describe also some of the aspects of the covariance modeling, and I'll show you some uh, results from uh, the that I got at next. So as I said earlier, the DS system is a 3D VAR with a parametric background error. Uh, I'll go into some more details of uh, what that means uh, later on. Uh, we do use that uh, EN VAR as a sanity check. 
uh, observations are all the in situ observations that uh, most uh, ocean GIS systems will be using, uh, and uh, satellite uh, retrieval, such as uh, FST and uh, altimeters. Uh, the period that we chose is uh, for the DA, uh, <coughs> DA experiments is uh, 2015 2016. We did that because of uh, uh, a switch from a non-large meander state of the core shifter and to a large meander state sometime in uh, 2016. Uh, and uh, that we chose that period because it's uh, quite difficult to uh, simulate the transition uh, with the uh, altimeter. So we thought that would be a good, uh, a good challenging period to study. Uh, we in, so, and we've been working with the UFS, mont 2 and GEO. So mainly three different groups, that's CMC, the DCSDA and then the GMAO. Uh, we decided to do a two-year spin-up uh, and then start uh, start our experiments in uh, 2015 and 2016. Uh, and as I said earlier, we need to release a benchmark three by uh, mid-March. Uh, next. So we already tagged a version that the EMC has been uh, testing with and using. Uh, that uh, figure is showing uh, the tag version that uh, Travis uh, released uh, at the end of uh, last year. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, Raul, uh, that actually that version is already uh, much better than uh, what we, we saw with uh, Godas or the CFSR. So that uh, bottom plot is showing the NG Godas as uh, compared to uh, compared to uh, EN4, which is uh, uh, an objective analysis. Uh, from uh, ECMWF or Metaf, uh, and uh, you can see uh, the Godas and oh, no, that's one too many uh, rows. Uh, you can see Godas uh, at the top, middle is CFSR, and the bottom one is uh, anti Godas, uh, looking uh, quite reasonable and uh, definitely better than the two other analyses. So uh, as it stands right now, we have a, uh, a system that is uh, already significantly better than uh, what was available at NOAA before. Next. Oh, sorry, and this, uh, that figure was uh, done by uh, Jason Zuba. In terms of observations, this is just a subset of observations that uh, we have uh, access to. Uh, this is what was used for that experiment that I'm going to be showing. Uh, we use uh, SST retrieval from uh, NOAA 19 and Method A. Uh, that's a level three product from a uh, GRIS. And uh, each, uh, each instrument has about 200,000 observations. 96% uh, of which, approximately, uh, are used uh, uh, at each uh, DA cycle. So again, uh, uh, our DA window is 24 hours. Uh, so these observations were actually super odd and produced uh, by uh, Travis Luca uh, back when he was at the CPC working with uh, actually YAM. Uh, so that's a produced product, and that's why you're seeing a very high number of uh, used observations. In terms of sea ice concentration, we're using a product that was developed at EMC by uh, Robert Trumbine. It's a level two product, and for the period that we're looking at, uh, we're using uh, SSMIS on the F18. Uh, the observation count for 24 hours is about uh, 3.7 million odds, and we only use about 15 to 20% of those uh, because of all the tutoring that needs to be done. Uh, for CI thickness, and I will go into some of the details of the issues that we are having with the UFS model itself, uh, but we do assimilate uh, thickness uh, from a product called GIOMAS, which is coming from a Washington state. It's a level four product, and in fact, it's actually a, a CI free analysis. It's not a great idea, but it's something that we've had to do. Uh, and I'll explain why in the next slide. Uh, so we also assimilate all the alternators available for that period. So JSON 2, Corelsat 2, Sentinel 3A, uh, and these are coming from uh, Nesbis Rad, and they are uh, level two products. Uh, so not SSH anomalies, but uh, absolute dynamic topography. Uh, and in terms of uh, odds count, it's about 50,000, 40 to 50,000 observations per altimeter, and we use uh, around 70% of those. And uh, finally, uh, all the in situ observations available. So that's coming from a uh, uh, at the Bold Ocean database, so Argo, CTV, XDT, and all the uh, moorings, tropical moorings. That's about 50,000 odds per cycle, and that's uh, quite a few less than what you would be. <laughs> that's fine, you can see there. Uh, 
And so we do assimilate about 85 to 90, 99% of these observations. Uh, and that's a high number because, again, these were super rods and preceded by uh, Travis Luca back when he was at CPC. Uh, so in total, it's about 1.1 to 1.3 million observations per 24-hour uh, sex cycle. I'm not quite sure how that compares to uh, CPSR or the old GODA, but I'm pretty sure it's probably an, or an order, at least an order of uh, magnitude more than uh, what was uh, done. Next. Next, uh, Raoul. Ah, oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so we've been having some issues and the problem has been fixed. Uh, as I'm speaking to you now. I got an email uh, yesterday or two days ago from uh, Jong saying that uh, the, the model is stable and we shouldn't have any issues anymore. But the version that I was running uh, was uh, becoming unstable after uh, a month or two of uh, integration, developing these uh, weird donuts uh, uh, in uh, the Arctic. Uh, so that's, uh, that, uh, that very bad plot on the top is uh, showing uh, the Arctic sea ice thickness uh, and that weird shape. Uh, so the only way I could actually constrain uh, that problem was to assimilate uh, that uh, geomass uh, product. So doing so, I was able to run uh, what is it forever? I only did one year of experimenting, but uh, so yeah, oops, yeah, that's done that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of uh, uh, coverage of uh, observations, uh, the left two panels are showing uh, NOAA 19 and method A. The uh, colors are of minus background, and that's for the end of uh, our experiment, so December 31st, 2015, and that's centered in the 12Z. And so you can see these two instruments are IDHRR, so the, the, uh, the coverage looks very similar. Um, we do need to uh, include also microwave uh, retrievals at least to have a better coverage for SSD. But this is what it would uh, look like per 24 hour cycle. And on the right, you're seeing a 24 hour cycle of all the altimeters that we have available. So this is 2, Cryosat 2, Sentinel 3A, color showing up minus background. And in that case, it's the beginning of, uh, of the window. And the black dots are showing uh, what has been filtered out. Next. So same thing, spatial coverage uh, per 24 hour window on the left showing SSMI uh, ice concentration. Uh, colors again are showing the up minus background and you can see the, uh, the large amount of alteration being filtered out. So uh, the black dots are the uh, uh, rejected ice observation. And on the uh, right, you're seeing uh, the geomass uh, uh, observation. So, uh, yeah, same thing for uh, for 2015, December 15. Next, please. Okay, so a quick uh, quick word on uh, quality control uh, with uh, the uh, the Jedi system. Uh, for the most part, there is absolutely no coding to, to do. All the filters actually already exist uh, in uh, inside of UFO. Uh, and they can be used across uh, observing systems. So the left, uh, the left panel is showing uh, the, a snippet of a, of a configuration file that we use for uh, the altimeter observation. And, uh, and so all of these filters that are described in that uh, file uh, are, can be used for other observation sites. So this is showing a landmass filter. We can also simply reject uh, ADT, uh, ADT being uh, absolute dynamic topography observations uh, in places where system surface temperature is less than five degrees Celsius, for example. Uh, we can reject uh, uh, ADT observations that are too far from the, the background. Uh, we can uh, reject observations that are outside of some specific uh, bounds as a sanity check. We can also assign uh, observation areas for the observation type that we're looking at. So in that case, uh, we're assigning a uh, 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 representation that is coming from the model and that's used as a, a, an observer in the, in the observation. And we, we can also reject 
uh, observations in specific places where we know we have uh, issues. In our case, it's issues in terms of uh, how to assimilate observation in these very specific specific areas. So the color in the plot on the on the right are showing the uh, actual observer used, uh, and uh, the black dots are the places where uh, where observations have been rejected. Next, please. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, okay, so the next few slides are going to describe uh, covariance modeling within our system. Uh, covariance modeling is uh, how are we going to relate uh, all these uh, state variables of the model or all the control variables uh, for your CDS. Uh, so that the B matrix uh, B on the left of that equation is actually decomposed into a, uh, a sequence of, uh, of uh, linear operators. And I'm, I'm going to go through uh, each of them and describe uh, what they are. So the first one, uh, that you see circled in blue here uh, is actually a, a correlation, a horizontal correlation operator that we get from a, uh, from a BUNT, uh, which stands for B matrix on unstructured mesh package. This is developed by uh, Benjamin Menetrier. And the figures on the left and right are showing impulse response to, uh, of a CH2 Dirac delta function in uh, different places in the ocean. And what BUM does is, uh, is very similar to what you would observe from a, a diffusion operator, for example, but a fr at a fraction of the cost. So it's uh, computationally very efficient. It, it takes a bit of time to initialize, but once initialized, uh, it's, it's a very efficient way to, uh, uh, to create a horizontal correlation for the ocean. Uh, next. Okay, so we did uh, develop uh, a vertical correlation operator for uh, what we represent, yeah, to uh, represent the uh, vertical uh, uh, convolution. Uh, that could have been done uh, inside of BAM, but for uh, issues that I will not uh, describe now, uh, we, we separated uh, the two. Uh, next. Okay, so uh, our background error is uh, parametric uh, in the sense that we derive it from the background. It's in that case here, it's not coming from an ensemble. Uh, so the uh, below the mixed layer, the uh, background error for temperature is uh, derived from uh, the gradient of uh, uh, the vertical gradient of uh, temperature, and uh, within the mixed layer, it's uh, it's based on a, a climatology of uh, SSP. Uh, of minus background, uh, and that work was done by Travis Chica again back when he was at the CPC. So we actually do the same climatology uh, for our uh, background area. Uh, we, we can also add an um, unbalanced uh, salinity and current, and same thing for uh, uh, ice concentration and thickness. So we do say that it's a static covariance model, but it's in fact uh, flow dependent. So the it does not prove at the chill phase because it's based on the, the plot that you see on the uh, bottom left, uh, but it does uh, change from uh, one cycle to the next, uh, depending on the, the gradient uh, of the temperature in the background. So static covariance, but so dependent. Next. Okay, so because that, uh, uh, that uh, the background area is uh, noisy, we do apply a horizontal filter uh, to make uh, the field a little smoother. Next. And finally, to uh, create uh, cross covariances between these variables, uh, we have a, a very basic uh, balance operators, which kind of looks like the one developed by uh, Wither et al. 2006. Uh, it relates uh, temperature and salinity in a similar way than uh, Trocoli and Heinz 99. Uh, and the same for uh, relating a uh, surface uh, of very tight to a uh, density of the ocean. So these are very uh, are very basic uh, balance operator for the ocean. Uh, we did add uh, Jacobians for relating uh, ice concentration and temperature. Next. And so the figure that you see on the right is a uh, is uh, even though we never specify a background error for salinity that you get from the balance. Uh, you can assimilate uh, sea surface height and uh, get an increment for temperature and, uh, and the salinity. Next.
Okay, so in terms of a hybrid covariance model, so you can, uh, OOPS will allow you to uh, mix uh, your static uh, B with an ensemble uh, B. Uh, and uh, I'm showing here uh, an example of a cross covariance for a pure uh, B ensemble. So uh, this was a, a test with a, an EN var where we turned off the static B uh, and just kept the, uh, the, uh, the sample covariance from the from the B ensemble. So this is only assimilating uh, ice concentration, and you can see how the ice concentrations are projecting onto uh, an increment for uh, not only ice concentration, but also sea surface height, uh, sea surface temperature, sea surface salinity, and so on. So that's, uh, it's, in that case, it's a strongly coupled DS system between the ocean and sea ice. And that's kind of the stuff that you would get from, a, uh, from a, the, B, uh, the ensemble B. Next. Okay, so we also have uh, an hybrid EN bar. I will not go into the detail of the workflow uh, of that uh, hybrid EN bar. It's supposed to look like uh, what was done for the DSI. Uh, the point of that workflow that you see on the left is uh, just to say that uh, we have all uh, the components that we need to create uh, that system and we regularly use it. Uh, so from uh, uh, creating initial perturbation using a randomization of our, our static B uh, to uh, having a, access to a Jedi LTA for a Jedi EMVAR. Uh, and in the case of uh, the experiment that I'm showing, it's all done with the UFS forecast uh, model. So the top uh, right figure or animated figure is showing the uh, evolution of the spread for sea surface the temperature uh, over three months. And the bottom right figure is showing the, uh, uh, the spread for a temperature uh, that's an equatorial section and it goes down to 500 uh, meter depth. Next. In terms of uh, results, so these are showing global mean absolute error of uh, of minus background for SST on the left and absolute dynamic topography on the right. Uh, the green uh, line is uh, the uh, test with the 3D VAR, so that's uh, a, a closer to a benchmark three. The red line is uh, what we were getting uh, with benchmark two. And that cyan line is a, a shorter experiment using a 3D hybrid EN VAR with the uh, 20 members. And so you can see uh, from red to green and to cyan, you can see uh, at least for SST on the, on the left, you can see the evolution of the progress of, uh, of uh, our work. Uh, we always use the uh, uh, hybrid EN bar to try to understand where our uh, 3D bar stacks up. We haven't made too much, uh, uh, we haven't spent too much time tuning our uh, EN bar system. So it has not really improved in terms of performance. Uh, for the past few months, uh, but the 3D VAR has, and we're using uh, uh, we're, we're using our hybrid EN VAR to try to understand how to uh, improve our 3D VAR. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, absolute dynamic topography, also we're uh, so that's the plot on the left of the right. Sorry, uh, we're using quite a few more observations than we used to from a benchmark two. So benchmark two was using about 35% of observations. We're now using approximately 70% of observations and it does translate in, into a better 24-hour uh, forecast. So that's, uh, if you look at the green line, which is uh, well below the uh, red line. Next. Okay, so that's the same thing. So global mean absolute error uh, of uh, OMDs for in-situ uh, temperature and salinity. Uh, there, there's not much to say here. Uh, it's these are global plots, so it's, uh, it's hard to draw uh, conclusions. But uh, this tool looks fairly reasonable. It's hard to see any uh, type of improvement, if any, uh, between, uh, between the runs. Uh, next. OK, Antarctic sea ice uh, mean absolute error for ice concentration on the left, ice thickness on the right. Uh, what's interesting, so for a benchmark two, we did not have, uh, we did not have CISDA uh, hooked in yet because we were switching from uh, size five to size six and I, we didn't have time to put the size uh, six uh, online uh, on the DS side. So all you're seeing 
is the uh, 3D VAR, the green line. So that's the 3D VAR in the cyan is again our uh, hybrid EN VAR. Uh, interestingly enough, the hybrid EN VAR is actually significantly better than the, than the 3D VAR. Uh, but well, it has to do with uh, how simplistic our background error is for uh, CIS concentration. But it also includes uh, a, a coupled uh, background. So assimilating ice concentration is going to actually impact the rest of the ocean state. Uh, so we're going to look into more details as to why that hybrid ENVAR is actually better for, uh, for the CIS forecast. Uh, and the, uh, the right is looking, is, uh, looking at, uh, the right figure is looking at the level for uh, assimilation, a level for uh, geomass assimilation. Uh, next, please. So this is a, a study done by Wai Chengteng. Uh, he was looking at uh, the total sea ice area, uh, so that's the sea ice extent, sorry, for uh, the year of 2015. Uh, the right most of plot is showing the uh, NSIDC estimate of the sea ice coverage for uh, the, the uh, uh, September 2015. The bottom middle plot is showing uh, the UFS 3D VAR for the same period of time. And then on the, the top, just show, the colors are showing the, uh, a case with no data assimilation for the same period of time. So you can see the uh, start improvement from uh, assimilating observations. And if you go to the time series of, uh, uh, of a CI extent, uh, the red line is, uh, is the, the 3D bar. Uh, the black line is the estimate from NSIDC and blue is the case with no DF. So you can see that we are pretty good at uh, simulating the, uh, uh, the low extent, but not so much uh, for the uh, high extent. I'm not quite sure why yet. Uh, next. Okay, so these are uh, mean absolute error for uh, uh, for ice concentration and thickness uh, in the Arctic. Uh, not much to say, very similar to what we see uh, uh, on the other uh, emitters. Next. Okay, so uh, in terms of sea ice thickness, uh, uh, so the top panels are showing the uh, uh, background for from the UFS analysis. And the bottom panels are sh showing estimates of uh, CI thickness from Cryosat 2. So that's uh, uh, a product from ESA. Uh, and these are monthly means. So I'm comparing the monthly mean to a snapshot in the middle of the month uh, for the UFS. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, the two figures on the, on the most uh, left uh, are showing uh, January 2015. And uh, for the UFS, it, it looks like uh, kind of what we start from in terms of CI thickness. So you, you can see it, uh, it's pretty far off uh, what the price has to look like. And as we go on, so at, at, that, at that moment, uh, the first, uh, so at the left, at that moment, the, uh, the DA has not seen CI thickness from Giomas yet. Uh, it actually starts in the, the middle of the month, uh, January. Uh, and as soon as you start assimilating, so you change the characteristic of the CIS distribution uh, in the Arctic, uh, and it starts uh, qualitatively looking a lot closer to, uh, uh, to uh, this retrieval from a prior task. And I see I'm running out of time. Uh, next. Uh, so it's similar also for uh, October, November, December, so the end of the simulation where uh, it, it looks qualitatively similar to a prior task. Next. Okay, and uh, that's my last uh, slide with figures. So uh, on the left, you're seeing, uh, so that this is a December uh, 2015. So that's showing the end of the experiment and it's flipping back and forth between uh, an experiment that assimilated, uh, so all the observations and a case with no data assimilation. So you can see, actually I can't see it flipping back and forth anymore, but oh, yeah, it did. All right, so if you look at it, if you look at the, the difference on that left plot, you can see how well defined the ocean currents are in the case when we actually assimilate observations. Uh, and yeah, so that's a decent result. The right panels are showing not results with the UFS, but with the MOM 62, uh, where I was actually able to run for a little longer. And this is showing, uh, this is flipping back and forth between uh, our analyses uh, in the, the middle of uh, 2016, 
and comparing that to uh, an objective analysis for absolute dy dynamic topography from uh, Aviso. And you can see that even at, uh, at one degree resolution, we can, we can start resolving this uh, ocean current quite well. Uh, so you can see that, uh, uh, um, that uh, eddy in the loop current, the crucial looks fairly reasonable. Same for Python current uh, and the Agula current. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little late by two minutes, but uh, the, this is it for uh, that talk. So what's next? Uh, so we are working on uh, providing a DS system for CPC and EMC. Uh, I think we're on time and we're going to uh, provide them with something that's actually quite good. Uh, and that product is going to be called the uh, NT That's probably something that you know more than the CI uh, In terms of uh, other applications, uh, the next steps are going to start implementing our system for uh, the initialization of the uh, seasonal to sub-seasonal forecast. Uh, that's going to be done at a higher resolution, per a degree. Uh, we need to start working also on the regional uh, MOM6 for uh, the hurricane analysis forecast system. Uh, there will be also more observations brought in carefully through a systematic uh, observing system experiment. Uh, and uh, we'll be also implementing more of the algorithm. And this is all I have, and I'd be happy to take your questions. Kim, thank you very much. I don't see any questions in the, um, the panel, but if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in and we can address them. So I'm, I'm just on the phone, so I can't see the question if there are any, so you'll have to either speak up or... Uh... Yes, um, nobody has uh, asked any questions. I guess you did that great at explaining. <laughs> so I'm not seeing any questions. But if anyone has anything, um, okay, I do have one question coming up. Are there any plans to pursue SCDA? To pursue what? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are there any plans to pursue SCDA? Oh, SCDA. Uh, so we we have we are working with. Uh, I'm assuming uh, that person is talking about uh, coupled. Uh, either weekly or strongly coupled data simulation, in which case, yes, there are plans at EMC and ESRL to uh, work on the couple assimilation, the same uh, for uh, the GMAO, where we do, uh, uh, we do try to work with the atmospheric side on developing a weekly coupled DS system. So uh, assuming uh, the, I understood the question, yes. Okay, so there is another um, question. Is there a plan to run Jedi Godas datum and analysis for the shortened period? EMC's coupled model development, especially for testing <clears throat> high res NWP forecast needs reliable ice and ocean ICs. And this is from I, I would say, okay, thanks. I would say possibly, I don't know if there are specific plans at EMC, but I'm assuming this is going to be part of the uh, of the last development that I was talking about, where we will be uh, initializing the S2S system, uh, which presumably could be uh, used to uh, initialize a much shorter term uh, forecast, so looking more at the NWP rather than S2S. Okay, there's another one. What is the plan for coupled ocean ATM DA based on what you have developed? Ah, that's a loaded question. Uh, so uh, from my perspective, the plan is quite simple. We're going to be working on weekly coupled data simulation. So we're not going to look at uh, the coupling through the B matrix. Uh, that's something that uh, possibly the GLI team will start looking at. Uh, but not uh, not our group. Uh, the first step is going to be a weekly coupled DS system. As in, 
uh, we will be running the atmospheric analysis separately from the uh, ocean and sea ice analysis. Okay, and then I have another one here. Um, what do you see as the greatest challenge challenges for SOCA within the context of the future coupled assimilation for S2S? Huh. Uh, well, the unknown as to uh, how we are going to be, I, I don't see too many scientific challenges in the beginning because most of it is going to be uh, technical development of bringing in atmospheric gear system with uh, the work that we've done on the ocean and sea ice. That is fairly straightforward. Uh, then after, we have to understand what the science is telling us from using the system in terms of forecast. Uh, biases that we observe in uh, the forecast from the coupled uh, model and how or how we should deal with these uh, within the DS system. Uh, that's kind of all I have. I believe that's, yeah, that's a uh, subject of, uh, of another uh, talk, I guess. Okay, so I have another one here. Do you have to interpolate um, MOM6 to Z coordinates to implement the background covariance? It looks like the covariance is separable into uh, what is that? Ventricle and vertical and horizontal. Yeah. So, uh, it, so this is defined inside of our, our interface. We, we can. We find these uh, correlation operators in whatever grid we decide we want to have them defined. Uh, currently, we collocate everything uh, on, the, uh, on the tracer grid point, but it doesn't have to be. This is what we do. So when uh, we introduce correlations for uh, current, for example, currently we assume that everybody, everything has been uh, interpolated onto the uh, tracer uh, grid point. But it's, it doesn't have to be. This is how we implemented it. It does not have to be done that way. OK, Ajam, and that is it. I don't have any other questions from anyone. And if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to email. Um, we'll get the questions over to um, you, Guillaume. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, and thanks for your time. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for joining the UFS webinar series for this week. We will talk to you um, in two weeks. We have another one. Thanks again. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Raul. Yeah. Bye-bye.